So over the last week, I've been reading this book. It just came out. It's called Unfinished Business. Unfinished Business. And it's by this lady on the cover. Her name is Yo Bien. And uh, yes, my book is <laughs> wrapped in plastic uh, to keep it in good condition. I am Asian. Uh, well, my sister did this. Uh, but she is YB Yobian. Uh, YB is a title of respect we give here to members of parliament. Um, and she is member of parliament uh, for Bakri, that's here in Malaysia. But she was also a former minister in government. And she was minister, I'm reading the, the back cover, minister of, uh, this is a mouthful, energy, science, technology, environment, and climate change. I, I think it's shortened to MES Tech. And uh, so lots of responsibility to do with technical areas of energy, science, technology, but also uh, current issues to do with climate change. And she rose to this position at the age of 35. And that, that's amazing, that's incredible. And she didn't expect to have to take on this role and responsibility. Uh, but the reason why she, the book is entitled Unfinished business. She wrote this book, by the way, uh, when she was, I think she was pregnant and she, um, uh, uh, she was in lockdown. So this was her lockdown project. <laughs> Lots of us were making Dalgona coffees and, and she was writing this book. <laughs> that's, that's incredible. But the reason why it's called Finished Business was because just before lockdown, I think she was forced to step down from her position. I think, I think the, the whole government kind of like uh, switched over and I won't go into that but some series of events forced her to cut her stint short as minister and so she writes uh, from a position of experience as a minister but also slight frustration at the challenges that she faced and so it's a very honest uh, account of her time in ministry uh, but also very gracious when I want to say. Uh, I, I know that some newspapers have been uh, <laughs> kind of like sniffing through bits of the book, trying to find the controversial bits. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, she writes in a foreword saying that uh, that's not her intention. Her int intention is to maybe even inspire hope. But it's a realistic hope. You know, you have to know what the challenges are in order to deal with them in a practical way. But she's very, very hopeful in terms of how these can be dealt with. And I think she offers some uh, perspective in how to deal with these things in a way that is positive. And I guess that's why I'm reading this book. You know, I really do admire her character. Uh, she uh, was overseas, she had a good job, but she moved back to Malaysia because she felt this call, she felt this uh, uh, um, desire to want to contribute to the nation and to be part of change. And she was in Cambridge before even, and she, she came back and she ran for office. Uh, the chapters that I found uh, really, really helpful for myself because I've just moved back to Malaysia. Uh, I must admit, I, I've only been reading the back chapters because they talk about her personal experience uh, moving back to Malaysia and running an office for the last 10 years. Uh, uh, and I, I find it really, really helpful because uh, she describes so many times, <laughs> so many times when she was discouraged. So many times when she was maybe even shocked at seeing things that she didn't realize how, how discouraging and how challenging and just how depressing it was. But, but she was still hopeful. And she still uh, rose to the occasion. And even though she was made a minister, you know, and that you would think would be the high point, um, actually I think it just uh, uh, made her more realistic as to all the challenges that needed to be dealt with. She didn't, she didn't take it easy in other words, you know, she, she really did her best to try to be responsible and faithful and to do a good job. And, and therefore I think even the title I think, I think reveals her uh, work ethic and her hopefulness for Malaysia, you know, uh, the unfinished business. It says there's a lot more to be done. And I think um, this book and especially her perspective in the book is really helping me to see Malaysia for what it is, but also, I guess, uh, what it could be. What it could be. You need you need lots of people like uh, like Yobian, um, and yes, she is so impressive. And very few of us will be able to do what she does, but I think very many of us can can have that hopefulness. And I think that's the key. You need very many people doing 
very small changes to have that big change rather than just a few individuals doing huge momentous things although we do need them to inspire us but I think the point of this book the point of people like this is to inspire many others to walk down that same path to share that same hope and to rise to those same challenges so um, yeah, I highly recommend this book. Um, I haven't finished all of it yet. There's a lot of detail in it and I look forward to reading it. Uh, but just to say that it's very affordable. <laughs> um, uh, this was 35 ringgit pre-ordered. Uh, she even signed, personally signed, uh, uh, the books that were pre-ordered and it came with a soft toy. It was a very uh, cute uh, hornbill. I think it's part of this project called Impian Saroa and I found out more about it by reading this book. Uh, just to say again, it's a good read, it's good value, and I really do recommend this.